You are now unmuted. Okay, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Can you guys hear me too? Yep, I can. And we're live, so take it away. Okay. So, um, hello everyone. My name is Fermin. I'm a programmer, a math student from Spain. I've been using Emacs for two years now, more or less. And today I'm going to talk about uh, Maxima Computer Algebra System into Emacs. So, uh, let's talk about what is Maxima. Well, Maxima is a system for manipulation of symbolic and numerical expression. It, it's similar in some regard to Octave, and it's also free software. Uh, it's derived from the Maxima from the 60s, from the MIT, and it's written in Common Lisp, which is a language that I really like and enjoy writing. So, for me, it's a plus. Okay. So, uh, let's talk about the initial support for Maxima. When I first started using it, I looked for support into Emacs, and I found that there's two major modes in the main repository of Maxima for Emacs. The first one is iMaxima, which I don't know too much about it. And the second one is Maxima.l, which is the one I took first, and it was pretty nice. It has like a major mode, a minor mode, and a nice ripple. But it also, it also has some disadvantage. Um, the first one is that it's quite outdated. I think it, it was uh, from the 2007. So it's not tested with the current Emacs version. And the second one is that it doesn't use modern Emacs capability. I'm talking, for example, about the last Ormo LaTeX preview from the last Emacs 27.1, I think. And the last one is that they're not integrated with common third-party extension. I'm talking about company, for example, well, third-party. Yeah, you know, the LPA, MILPA packages. So uh, this talk is going to be divided in two parts. The first one is going to be how is Maxima in my day-to-day -day in Max exercise. Don't worry, it's going to be quite easy. And the second one is going to be why I forked the package and the least improvement that I did. And a couple of things more, maybe the future and where is the package right now, if you can use it. So uh, let's talk about the workflow. So right out of the box, it has like an Ormo support. I didn't write this, it was already in um, in Emacs. Um, so that's pretty nice. Let's go with a simple example. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, so this is an array of three equations and three variables. So it's a system that can be solved and the solution is unique. Um, so we're going to solve it, right? Let's go. Uh, solutions. Okay, here's how you define a variable in let's call solve. Okay. Let's call in Implicit, implicit. Oh, no. sorry. <laughs> okay, and now an array of uh, variables. Okay, so first of all, we have to send this variable to the Maxima REPL. We we can do that with Control C, Control C, or with the Maxima send line. Okay, so let's um, let's put the Maxima buffer right here. Okay, let's so. Um, right now we can get the solution like this. So we call already, uh, we call this line right now, Ctrl C, Ctrl C. As you can see, we get like an array inside an array because uh, let's see why we get this. So we can call Maxima uh, help at point. This will open a doc, a doc um, buffer with all information about the solver function. So we can see that there's a list of solution equations. If you can see it. Okay, so but we know we know that this system only has one solution, so we're only interested in the first one. We can do this like pretty easily just to take the first one, right? We can send it to the buffer. So this is quite easy example. As you can see, the auto completion and some of the help uh, facilities that we have. We can also get information about the symbol, for example, maxima symbol doc. And we get in the I don't know if you can see it correctly, in the mini buffer, all the possible um parameter of the function, right? So let's continue. Okay. So let's go to a more, well, complicated example, so to say. Oops. Okay. So uh, we have this uh, equation and we want to go from minus one to five. I want to show in a nice graph, right? First of all, we begin sending this line to the Maxima REPL. Put it in the bottom again. Okay. Um, so this is not ideal if you want to write down this equation because it's quite messy. Where, where is when? So 
uh, what thing are where. So we can call the function maxima let's say insert form. Okay. And this is more easy. This basically uh, put text behind and, and let our mode to render it. And this is quite easy to write down. You can use it like um, in every uh, expression. So um, first we have to call a library. Let's load the library. Library draw. We have also completion for local variable, um, local libraries, sorry. Oops, let me try to finish, draw, okay. And we send the line. So right now we have a library and we should even have auto completion for the library function. Okay, we have. Let's call draw 2D and now we can call implicit, we should have, okay. And we can I mean, put the variable of equations. We put the first variable, d minus five, d five, five, the v variable, d minus five, and the five. Okay, it should be all, all good. So let me try to send it. Okay, you cannot see it right now because <laughs> I'm just sharing the maxima screen. Let me try to change that. Okay. Um, okay, can you plot? Hello? Okay, so this is basically <laughs> the graph that Canoe plot generates. Uh, right now, it's not integrated into into the Maxima package, but it's a work in progress. So let's go back to Emacs. Uh, where are you? Okay, there you are. Okay. Okay. So um, let's continue. So uh, this is some of the things that you can use for your day-to-day -day programming in Maxima. Um, let's go now with the... Okay, as you can see, this is just text that is rendered. Okay, let's go with the next slide. This is how I use Maxima, a simple example. I don't want to uh, talk too much about it because everyone uses the package in a different way. So right now I'm going to talk about the original package and the way I change it, right? So the documentation uh, of the original was great, but uh, for me, it wasn't embedded in the code. It was something sometimes hard to read. Like it was like a big chunk of comment give me all the information like um for me that's too much i prefer a cohesive small um comment and then a big read me with all the all the links and information so that's one of the first thing i change um then also completion i'm a big fan uh, i'm used to slime so I'm, i love great auto completion <laughs> so um the first thing that i noticed that well it uses an absolute function i don't know if you can see it correctly okay um Coming dynamic is deprecated, and it also have like this uh, variable, which is maxima symbol, which is basically a big uh, list of all the possible completion. So, uh, if I load the library, it's not aware of the new symbols, or even if I create a variable, it's not loaded, so it's not dynamic. So I want the first thing I want is dynamic completion, right? So I improve it, <laughs> which wasn't that hard. I first of all create maxima get completion, which we're going to see in a moment, and then I change this completion region. So this is the improved version. But the good thing is like I decouple the completion function, so I make that you can use it on your own. So you get a prefix, which is um, like the, the thing that you're going to auto complete. You get the inferior process, which I'm going to talk about later, but basically it's a maxima process you can work with and you get an optional argument, which is fuzzy finding. Okay, so you can easily send a block here with, uh, with the uh, propos, which is a maxima command that gets you all the auto-completion, and then you process the, the output and you return a, a list of possible completion. This function can be easily put into company, as you can see. You just get maximum auxiliary inferior process. It's a process that just uh, uses, sorry, I have of all the apropos and the get that symbol. It's like a, like you say auxiliary. <laughs> like it's help me uh, for all that dirty stuff. So, and process manipulation. Let's talk about uh, how the maxima process was in the beginning. So at first it was just one process and you send all of the things there and you move the process here and there and uh, there was a global state, right? So all the function depends on 
variable, global variables. Um, I don't like that approach. I prefer more like a, a short to say functional, like you send one of things and you return something. So it's not like a void uh, function, short to say. So I change it drastically. Uh, well, this is the maxima star function now. It just create a star process with this function, which is maxima make inferior. So this function just uh, uh, gets a name and it return a process of maxima and you can then manipulate it the way you want. Let's see a better version. So this is the opposite, right? This remove an inferior process and delete the process and kill the buffer, right? So let's give it an example because this you can see pretty easily in this example. So I want to go to the scratch buffer, which I think you can see it better. Okay, so uh, this is the way you can get a process with your name and save it into a variable, right? Let's execute this. So as you can see, well, I don't know if you can see big, you get a process. Let's go to it. The process is called my maxima as the buffer, right? And if we can, you can send stuff to the process, right? We can call maxima send block, get a block of valid maxima code and just pass the variable to the process and we send code to the process, right? We can, uh, this is useful if you have some expensive computation that you want to process asynchronously, so to say, so the process can manage it. And when you get the results correctly, you can also get the result from the process. I mean, I don't put it here, but it's quite easy. And then you remove the inferior, which is the way to get rid of the process and the buffer. So if we call this function, we should get rid of the of this process. And it works. The process is no longer. I'm happy to continue. <laughs> so, um, a lot of things that improve the package. Oh my god, I'm doing time. I'm going good. Okay, another thing that I did to the package was to add a continuous integration and continuous delivery, right? So the package didn't have any tests and the code was a little bit messy. So I um, add integration, a test and test with the test simple framework from Rocky Bernstein, the maintainer of real good, which is a great package, by the way. Um, yeah, this is one example of the process. So right now, because um, the infrastructure of the process management is decoupled, so I can test it pretty easily. This is the test function of the inferior running, so I can check if an inferior is running right now, and I can just delete it after and get the results. And I also did some integration with third-party packages. The first one company, of course, I love auto-completion. The second one was Ormold, that was already there, and LaTeX with the um, or in LaTeX insert form. And with poly mode, because, um, let me evaluate this, Maxima can understand Lisp code. Well, more or less. <laughs> it has a, like a function, so to say, that you can send a Lisp command to the Maxima REPL and you can understand it in some way. So we can go to the Maxima poly, oh, poly Maxima, right? You enable poly Maxima and it creates a poly mode, which this is Lisp code and this is Maxima code. So we can send this to the Maxima REPL with control C, control R, which it send the, um, the current um, area, region, sorry. And we define a variable, which is called test. And as we can see, we have the variable test right here. So you can uh, program in Lisp uh, and you can send it to Maxima. So this is pretty good, pretty nice. Um, working integration with the slime mode and with Swank. So you can actually have also completion of a function inside the Maxima Lisp package, but this is going to take <laughs> quite a while because it's not trivial. So. Um, what are the feature of Maxima right now? Well, we have fonts highlighting, smart indentation. Uh, it was already in the package, but now it's quite better. Uh, great help functions. Right now, uh, you can find the documentation quite fast and currently. The menu integration, this is quite basic. It needs to be a little bit improved. Uh, LaTeX support, auto completion, local company, and Maxima process integration, and mini buffer. I didn't show you, but basically, if you call global Maxima minor mode, you have the minor mode and you call maxima mini buffer. Oh, where are you? Okay, mini buffer. You can basically just uh, write simple maxima command and it will give you the result. This is like a poor man version of um, calc. So you can, okay, yeah, you, you write the command and you get the output. And uh, way more to come. I have like a list of um, issues that I put enhancement and new feature that I'm going to develop. 
So, uh, the future and the present of the package. Well, the package is right now Melpa, a uh, Melpa's table. Uh, Melpa's table is in the, in the uh, 0.7.6 version. And I'm planning to include into the non GNU Elpa. This is the URL of the package, by the way. So you can, if you go to Melpa, you put Maxima and you can download it. Uh, it doesn't have too much dependencies. You are aware of that? Um, and thank you very much. Uh, this is going to be my talk. These are my uh, information. This is my GitLab. This is my page, which I don't love too much. And this is my email. So um, thank you very much. And I will be answering some questions right now. And happy hacking. You are now unmuted. Thank you very much, Furman, for the great talk. Um, okay. Yeah, let's see if we have any questions. Uh, yeah, I'm reading like this. Um, so I'm a body of Java user right now. Okay. Maxima over October. Yep, there are a couple questions. Mm. Wow, Maxima over October. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't know October that much. Um, like, I use it like a couple of times, but I'm not avid. And I found the um, October package to be quite. Uh, a little bit harder to understand and also that um, it, it didn't have too much features like I prefer the maximum I'm used to maybe Octave is better I don't I'm not 100% sure I know that you can use it for similar stuff but that's it <laughs> so sorry oh, okay I'm in a little bit of a rush <laughs> sorry let me drink a little bit okay Okay. Uh -huh. muted. <laughs> okay. Um, how does Maxima compare to SageMath in Emacs? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know what is SageMath. I'm sorry. Um, so I cannot answer your question. With your question, I think. Um, sorry. <laughs> But I mean, Maxima is written in Common Lisp. That's just a preference for me because I like uh, Lisp dialect and, th and Common Lisp is interesting. Um, yeah. Uh, do you plan to have a Maxima supporting session for Maxima code block? Yes, I want to improve the um, of Maxima package but uh, I didn't have enough time and I want to clear a little bit of the code because still right now um, uh, the code is quite messy in some areas because I pretty much implement first the base function I want to build on top of so right now it's quite usable but I still have something that I want to improve so when I finish that I will um, improve the normal version I think is Maxima easy to get into, into your opinion? Yes, I uh, I think that the creator of Maxima like have this Lisp uh, mind, and probably uh, um, that they if you go to a symbol, you get all the information, and that reflect that you can actually write your program of Maxima into um, into Lisp literally because they have a command. So I think that is quite easy to get into. Some universities they use it for um first um years so it, it's quite easy and i think with my package you can use it like pretty pretty easily you just uh, create a file and you can start typing and maximize quite easy to install also so i think yeah it's quite easy and the, pa the page should restart i don't know why sorry okay uh maxima syntax trick in fixed listener hmm uh, infix, a strict infix Lisp syntax. Um, you're talking about the Maxima itself syntax, or I don't understand the question correctly. Hmm. Well, I'm going to go to the next question. Is there support for images in Maxima mode? Not right now. Uh, the way I want to implement some IMAX, um, things uh is there support for but right now it doesn't have like a if you could want to have a GNU plot um inside you prefer right now it's not possible 
So that's the thing that I Maxima does that, that Maxima.lst doesn't do. Which university do you start to use Maxima? Um, in the Zaragoza University from Spain, they use Maxima in the um, thing in the engineer and in the math also. So not hundred percent sure right now, but when I start it. Are you planning to option your package into Maxima? Um, I don't know about that because um, maybe can be a little bit messy because um, uh, the Maxima REPL is more built around like Maxima itself and they don't update the interfaces that much. I have no problem. Like it's okay. It just um, you just have to um, if you want to push, you can push in other repository. I mean, it's just changed the file in another way. But also, the test um, is going to be a little bit harder because I think they're using uh, search for, and I'm using uh, GitLab uh, continuous integration continuous delivery. So yeah, I don't think that. You're now unmuted. But it will, yeah, it will be nice. Okay. Um, is it possible to include maximizing or files similar to Jupyter notebooks? Um, I mean, you can uh, use maximize your or uh, files, and you have maxima.l mode integrated. Uh, you can like create uh, put that code into a buffer and then uh, um, uh, edit it correctly. But it is now not. It doesn't have like all the features like other languages because right now, as uh, my understanding, is quite basic. So I still have some, still need some, some stuff, some work around. Okay, I think that's it. You are now unmuted. I need more. Okay. Yep. So that's it. Uh, thank you very much, Firmin, for your live talk and for you know the live Q and A. Thank you all. Amazing, uh, Imaxconf. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. It's thanks to you, all you guys. It's awesome. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Bye.